Oh, I'm sorry. Pledge Didn't have my glasses on. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Now, Teresa, proceed with a roll call. Present. 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 Here. Motion to approve. Uh, Wade, second. Rocco. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. John, we have awards and presentations. Can you join I join you. We have a new angle of the podium today. Uh, welcome, uh, everyone, and, and uh, this is the best part of today's event is, is to be able to recognize uh, both staff and partners for the good work that they've done over the last quarter and, and beyond. And uh, our first award is the Resource First Award, and created this award uh, oh, several years ago, and, and uh, we hold reserve for, for, for special people and special, uh, special occasions and events. And, and today I'd like to present the Resource First Award to William A. Cornell. Bill Cornell is... Uh, um, with the Susquehanna River School, and um, uh, which is um, uh, a, a, a school that takes place on the pride of the Sus Susquehanna and supports many different agencies, businesses, and organizations, and the people who are har working hard to repair the Susquehanna River. The Susquehanna is one of the longest and oldest rivers in the entire uh, nation and planet, and is even older than the Appalachian Mountains that we know so well. It's been a source of commerce and industry since the arrival of European settlers in our state in the early 1600s. Centuries of use and abuse have left their toll on the scenic waterway. By the early 20th century, the Susquehanna had a reputation for being a polluted waterway. The large runs of, of American shad have disappeared with the creation of the four high head dams along the lower river. A, a concentrated effort was made to clean up the Susquehanna and if you head out on the river today during a warm June evening, you are bound to see millions of mayflies swarming the banks every night. The return of the mayflies and the other animals that feed on them indicate a cleaner and safer river than ever before. However, while the river is currently in better shape than it has been for the better part of a century, there are still many challenges facing the Susquehanna. The Harrisburg Area Riverboat Society supports these fine organizations who are working hard to improve the river for generations yet to come. It's with this award that the Commission recognizes Bill Cornell and the Susquehanna River School, who realize that great recreational fishing and boating relies on placing the resource first. Bill, if you can join me. Especially for you with this Susquehanna <coughs> backdrop that walk, that walk our graphic artist did the design and has a small mod front and center. So this is this is uh, unbelievable. This is uh, kind and generous and, and uh, very nice of you folks. Uh, I'm just happy to be here and, and be able to work with you. I don't need an award, <laughs> but I but I did bring along a couple things that I'm going to pass along to everybody and. I don't need a mic. I generally have these uh, voice. Good sound voice. My parents paid extra for. Uh, but I brought along for all of you applications. We started a new program. As you all know, we've been working with John. We also have SOS program that we've been running. You see our signs out there. We have our SOS stickers here. 
for all of you. These are free. They're not that we're not violating the governor's anything. Uh, we have the other ones over here with uh, Mr. Poopy Head. Uh, but SOSPennsylvania.org is our website that we created just for inspiring people to help get the Susquehanna River cleaned up. And for all of you, if you get your parents' help and you fill out these applications and send them in and you pledge to do a couple promises, uh, uh, we'll, we'll make you all Susquehanna River heroes. But make sure you get your parents' help to, to fill these out. I'm going to leave these up here for everybody. But I want to thank you, John. It's a pleasure to work with you. We're going to continue to work with you. Absolutely. And this is far more than uh, than I would expect at all. Gerhard? Uh, would, like would, like, yeah, would you like Bill in the middle? Me and John? Oh, one side. I'll it's his award, one. not ours. Here he goes. Bill's back. John. John. I, I, this I can handle. The lady taking the pictures, I got to tell you, is my fiance, Dr. Catherine Benny. She's a retinal eye surgeon out of York, Pennsylvania. If you go to our website, you will see the images of Ms. Fish, a large costumed person carrying a pole that says, I may look like a fish out of water, but I'm safer than being in the Susquehanna. <laughs> Dr. Oh. Benny <laughs> Way to go. is in that costume. It's worth a sight just to see. Yeah, thank you. Thanks again. Thanks again. Thanks for all the I'll carry Thank you. Wow. Even a plastic cover. John, thanks. You're welcome. <clears throat> good luck to everybody. Good work. Yep. Thank you. Please keep Bill and Steve Ketter. No, I forgot to. We are the Riverboat Society. This board. one goes with it, too. Oh, my gosh. Wow. That's a special art that we had uh, produced and, and replicated, and, and uh, we figured it symbolizes your efforts to protect the bass. Yes. Well, if I was a legislator, you guys would be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, if you can do any help on our license bill, we'd appreciate it. I already have. <laughs> You did. <laughs> well, thanks again, Bill, and thanks for the good work, and we're, we'll, we'll definitely look forward to working with you to get the river back to where it was. Good. We'll do the same. Our next award is uh, to the Fishing Creek Sportsmen's Association in recognition for their donation to the SOS campaign. Uh, many thanks to Vice President Mike Zenzel and Treasurer John Cotter and the Fishing Creek Sportsmen's Association for their generous contribution of $5,000 to SOS, Save Our Susquehanna Campaign. The Commission launched this campaign to save the river on June 2nd by announcing the, that the proceeds would be dedicated to funding water and soil conservation projects along the Susquehanna, whose smallmouth bass populations has been, have been plagued over the last decade by illness and elevated mortality rates. The Association's donation has been deposited into a restricted revenue account where it will be used to fund projects that will help fix the river. It is critical that we focus our collective efforts on protecting this national treasure. Your gift demonstrates a commitment to the conservation of this valuable natural resource. And your contributions to help save the river for this and future generations are commendable. And we want to thank you. Um, Mike and, and John, if you could join me up here. And they brought along a, a, uh, a, a check that represents the size of their donation um, that, that we, uh, we use in a ceremony up at the um, trout nursery uh, the other day, and thanks for coming down. And we really appreciate the contribution. Thanks. Sure. I have to say, uh, along with. Um, the Fish and Creek uh, Sportsman's Association's check, uh, we're up over $30,000 right now with the SOS campaign. And we just went um, worldwide with the uh, first giving campaign. So we're anxious to, 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 to grow the fund to the 50000 goal that we had for public contributions, that we're, we're going to match that. Uh, staff are actively working on uh, selecting a project uh, to represent and, and, and use the funds uh, that we can then use as a demonstration of our commitment uh, to the river and improving the river's water quality. So thanks again, Mike and John. Our next award is a life-saving award 
uh, presented the Christian Trayer. On Wednesday, September 16, 2015, Kristen Trayer was recreating near the shores of the Conagwinnick Creek near the Cave Hill Dam in North Middletown Township in Cumberland County. Hearing a woman shouting for help, Christian entered the water and swam to the victim. Christian was able to use a rescue technique he had learned at a friend's pool to secure the victim, keeping her head above the water and returning her to shore. Christian's life-saving efforts that afternoon are, commend are to be commended. Had he not been present and acted quickly, um, it probably would have, much ended, it would have ended much differently. Because of Christian's bravery, it is a distinct pleasure for the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission to present him with this life-saving award. Christian, if you can join me here at the podium, and we'd like to thank you for the, for the efforts that you did. Congratulations, Christian. That's a wonderful thing to do as a young man. Thank you. You hold that up. Step over here a little bit, guys. Get away from the podium. John, I think are those his parents? Yeah. Feel free to come forward. Oh, yeah, yeah. we're going to take the floor. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. don't have to stand in the back <laughs> and get the long distance yeah. shot. In fact, if you want to get in the picture, we can get one with you, yeah, too. Please. Sure. You sure? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Christian. Do you have anything you'd like to say? Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for your effort. I'd like to say that, you know, a young man like this saving a person's life is phenomenal. Um, the, these kids today don't usually have that respect, and it's wonderful to see you do that. That was very nice of you. Good. Thank you. Thanks again, Christian. Our Next to the last award is, is to one of our own, Liz Ebling. Uh, Liz, Liz was chosen for the Wave of Excellence Award um, by her peers, our staff. And, and um, this award was created in the interest of recognizing a job well done for our staff. And the commission implemented an employee recognition pro program called the Wave of Excellence. Um, and the concept is for our employees to recognize each other who have gone above and beyond the call of duty in performing their work or have provided extraordinary customer service. I'm pleased to announce that Elizabeth Liz Ebling uh, is the eighth recipient to receive the Wave of Excellence, or what we call the WE Award. Uh, Liz was nominated by a fellow co-worker and the seventh recipient of the award, Katie Brashear. Uh, Liz is known to put WE above the PFBC, uh, above me. As a winner of the Wave of Excellence Award, Liz will be permitted to keep the award for six months and also enjoy a weekend stay at our, our uh, field station, research, uh, Station 22, uh, with her family and friends. And uh, Liz's husband, Rob McClanahan, uh, also uh, worked for us. Uh, Rob's retired now. So, Rob, you'll finally get that chance to, to fish at Station 22 and, and stay at it. Um, I'd like to invite Liz and, and, and Katie Brashear to the podium, and Katie, I'd ask you to present the award and pass it on to Liz while I read a couple more points about, about Liz. Uh, Liz has served as the administrative officer for the Fish and Boat Commission for a, lo a long time. I won't say how many years, Liz. Uh, first, <laughs> she started her career in the Bureau of Engineering and then moved on to the Bureau of Fisheries and uh, also served uh, fisheries, hatcheries, and now the deputy for field operations. And, Liz is uh, located in Pleasant Gap. Her roles include administrative functions, budget submissions, monitoring, overseeing personnel action requests, and everything else uh, that an administrative officer does. Her former education and professional experience in business processes provides considerable value to the commission and the staff she supports. Most importantly, she provides an unparalleled level of consistency and professionalism, is a willing guide and mentor to many colleagues, is an excellent team member. Uh, I'm pleased to, uh, to uh, have Katie pass on the Wave of Excellence Award uh, to Liz Ebling. Um, 
I just want to say thank you very much to Katie for choosing me uh, for this award. It was very much a surprise, and I, I feel um, just uh, kind of overwhelmed. So thank you very much. Um, as uh, John mentioned, I work with a lot of people in the agency, most closely with, with Andy and Leroy and Brian Wisner day-to-day, uh, -day, but also with, with uh, Katie and Michelle and uh, you know Steve and Sherry, uh, it's all part of the uh, field ops, and also legal and admin, almost on a daily basis. So um, this is a great organization. We're working very hard to do great things. And again, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Boy, girl, boy, girl. Yeah. <laughs> and for a final presentation, I'd like to ask Colonel Britcher uh, to join me at the podium, and he has a special presentation to the board. Um, as you all are aware, good morning again, Commissioners. As you're all aware, we, we started our 150th year um, anniversary of, of serving the citizenry of the Commonwealth and protecting the resource. And as part of that, law enforcement has uh, decided to do a couple things to, to kick off and get the ball rolling. Um, so I'm going to read to you a memo here. I don't know if any anybody you, I don't know if any of you noticed anything different about my uniform this week or not. Um, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and read a memo here that uh, is going out to all the officers, and it says 2016 ushers in the agency's 150th anniversary. In March of 1866, the state legislature established what we know today as the Fish and Boat Commission to protect the Commonwealth's declining fish population. That role would soon be changed to also address water pollution and eventually boating safety. Over the last 150 years, the actual day-to-day -day job of being an officer hasn't changed much. Of course, the technology and the citizenry has. But as we, but as we are still the first line of defense for the aquatic resource and those that enjoy it. During that time, our name has changed from warden to waterways patrolman and finally to the current waterways conservation officer. To honor those that came before us, as we continue to look, look and move forward, and BLE has decided to commemorate our 150th anniversary by commissioning a retro badge. Each officer will be issued the 150th year badge. Uh, actually, is going to take place at statewide next week. Uh, it's a fish warden badge to be displayed when in uniform from now until 1231 of 2016. Uh, at that time, the badge will no longer be authorized to wear. My hope is that while wearing this badge, it will provide many opportunities for you to share the rich history of the agency with the public and other agencies that we serve with. So, commissioners, if you could all come forward, what we also decided to, suit, to do with uh, uh, Executive Director Arway's uh, blessing was to commission a, a fish commissioner badge. If you could all stand in front of the, uh, the lectern here. And uh, also we have uh, Executive Director's badge to present to him. since I'm the president. Um, as you know, we are um, given law enforcement powers, but we are actually uh, all considered, in our minds, more ambassadors. Um, we preach fishing, we preach boating, um, we preach safety, and that's our job in the field. Um, as Corey will attest to, we have great officers, great law enforcement. We, we take this badge with pride and with uh, uh, a meaning that it, it has a respect that that we are respected by our law enforcement and by the people of the state to do a job. And uh, as I said, we'll continue to be good ambassadors, all of us. Thank you. Well, Thank you. Spring, can we grab a picture quick of nothing else for our country? <laughs> <laughs> uh, might have to stand in 
the back wall. Oh, we got to squeeze in. Two rows. Yeah. Two rows. Shorty guys in the front. Yeah. Jump in. Jump in. Jordan. Yeah. Little short guys. Yeah. Little short guys. That's all right. Spring up there. Um, as as we uh, go through um, service here in the Fish and Boat Commission, um, there is a small token that is given out um, for every, I believe, five years of uh, duty. And uh, it's my pleasure to hand Director Arway, and I think it says 35 years on it, correct? I think they made a mistake. Oh, did they? <laughs> 40. It does. I will look. It is, yes, 35 years of service, but it's how many? It's 35. Okay, 35 years. Um, I'd like to thank Director Arway. 35 years is a phenomenal thing. I've, I, in private industry, I've worked for my family for 35 years, but that's a totally different thing. Um, you know, for an employee to stay on for that long, um, get to the stature of John and, and now run the agency um, and do all the things that he's done for 35 years. I'd like to present him with his badge. Thank you. You're welcome. And it, on another note, I've asked that um, since commissioners aren't actual employees, but we serve at the pleasure of the Senate and the governor, and we do put in four to eight years on this board, um, in March we'll be presenting small badges to us as commissioners for service too. Thanks. I just uh, like to say it's been uh, quite a ride. Um, sometimes a roller coaster ride. Uh, other times a pretty smooth ride. But uh, you know, the job's not done yet. So I really appreciate being recognized for 35 years of service to the agency, and look forward to a, to a few more. So uh, thanks again to the board for the support they've given me over the year, the last six years as director now, March 2nd. And and uh, and I'm really looking forward to implementing some of these new ideas that you heard at this commission meeting and we'll hear at the next commission meeting in March when we celebrate and commemorate our 150th anniversary. So thanks again. You're welcome, John. All right. Um, John had originally uh, had a small executive director's report, but we have a, a busy afternoon schedule with some legislative stuff, so we're going to dispense with uh, no, no director's report since we all get a director's report every uh, conference call every month and uh, we've had active discussions here today. Um, we'll go ahead and uh, dispense with the executive director's report. Um, and Teresa, announcement of executive session. Or is that my job? Okay. <laughs> yesterday, yesterday morning and again this morning, we had an executive session to uh, talk about some personnel issues and other financial things. And uh, we're, we, uh, we had that yesterday for about 45 minutes and this morning for only about 15 to 20 minutes. So moving on, I've announced that. Anything else? Okay. The reports of the committees. Uh, executive administration falls under my jurisdiction. Um, <coughs> we had no rulemaking uh, things, no designations. We had three property easement acquisitions and uh, or four acquisition easements. Uh, one was a property uh, purchase and the other was a flowage easement. And we had several discussion items that went through different things. Uh, and we had a discussion this morning about the Pennsylvania uh, school at Penn State of business <coughs> and putting together a business strategic plan. <coughs> I have nothing else to add. And moving on to boating. Commissioner Ketter. Uh, Mr. President, the uh, boating committee uh, met this morning. We had uh, three final rulemaking uh, items on the agenda that uh, uh, Colonel Britcher talked about. And we went over uh, a wetland and conservatory project and Ryan Walt talked about the 2015 boating stats. And that concluded our meeting this morning. Thank you. 
Thank you, Commissioner Ketter. Moving on, we'll do fisheries. Commissioner Squires. President Masharka, the Fisheries Committee met yesterday. We had uh, two final rulemaking items, uh, one related to Possum Lake, the other to Leaser Lake, uh, continuing the uh, catch and release uh, since the uh, stock fish in those lakes being refilled have not grown to an acceptable length yet. Uh, that regulation will continue until such time that staff uh, deems it uh, acceptable for catch and keep on the <coughs> species stock there. Uh, we had uh, several designations that were done. Um, Kettle Creek uh, continuing um, all tackle section. Uh, Lake Winola stock trout opened a year round. That designation was changed. Uh, classification of wild trout streams. Uh, there were a number of new wild trout streams added and uh, proposed additions to Class A wild trout streams. Uh, under other matters for the agenda, uh, continued stocking of Class A wild trout streams. Uh, two of those were addressed. Uh, we had discussion items on a hatchery update on the uh, co-op unit, uh, Reynoldsdale Fish Hatchery coming online and a um, celebration for the grand opening of that, and then uh, alternate crappy regulations on um, Joseph Sayre, Foster Joseph Sayers Lake. Uh, that concludes the report on the Fisheries Committee. Thank you, Commissioner Squires. Moving on to Commissioner Hussar <coughs> on Habitat. We had no final rulemakings or proposed rulemaking uh, items on the agenda. We had a, a, a matter on the agenda item as discussion with the statewide habitat improvement and fisheries management, management <coughs> program that Mark Hartle presented. Um, we also had some discussion items concerning the Gray Run and Speedball Forge uh, habitat projects and discussion of uh, from Mark, the presentation with the DEP Chapter 93 upgrades of Class A waters. Um, that's all I have for now. Thank you, Commissioner Hussar. Uh, moving on to Commissioner Ally, law enforcement. Thank you, Mr. President. We um, opened the law enforcement meeting. We had no final ruling um, things to deal with, nor proposed rulemaking. Um, we did have discussion of the pollution hotline, which was used 19 times uh, since the last commission meeting. We also had Colonel Britchard gave us an update on the WCO class, which will be graduating later this year. We did have one revocation uh, that we approved for five years. That concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Ally. And moving on to Commissioner Elliott, Legislation and Public Outreach. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we met yesterday. Uh, we were happy to have uh, Secretary John Hanger, who is the governor's policy director with us. Um, he was uh, very informative and very informed and said that both he and the governor understood our funding needs for fish habitat, hatcheries, high hazard dams, and access. And he gave us an update on uh, Growing Greener 3 and the fact that uh, he obviously saw our need to be included in that and, and recognize such. We then had a good presentation by Tim Schaefer on our efforts to secure a license increase and also what, what I'm nicknaming fee independence that would um, unlink us from the legislature in terms of being able to, uh, in a business model, set our own uh, fees. We had a presentation on the 150th anniversary kayak giveaway, uh, a good money-saving effort that's taken place on the summary book consolidation, uh, some, some good efforts that are uh, reaching out to female uh, anglers and trying to recruit them and retain their participation in our uh, sport. And then we had uh, a preview of the video on Ralph Abel um, that was done by uh, Public TV. Is that the ITF? which is uh, an excellent uh, video and presentation. And is that available on our website at this time? It's available on their website. Their website. It's available on their website. I would encourage anyone to look at that. And that concludes my report. We'll be presenting items A, B, C, D, and E on your agenda, uh, which starts on page three. Uh, all five items are property related and were reviewed and approved by the Executive and Administrative Committee. Uh, Item A, 
easement acquisition, the Krause property in Erie County. This item authorizes the acquisition of a fishing access easement on roughly uh, 1,175 uh, linear feet of stream frontage along both sides of Elk Creek for $18,000. If approved, the easement acquisition will be funded with monies generated through the sale of Lake Erie fishing permits. I'll move that, Second. 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 Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next item is B, uh, easement acquisition Cubit property, Erie County. Uh, this item authorizes the acquisition of a fishing access easement on roughly 870 or 870 linear feet of stream frontage along both sides of Elk Creek for $13,500. If approved, the easement acquisition will be funded with monies generated through the sale of Lake Erie fishing permits. Motion to accept. Motion. Motion. Second. Second. Okay. Second. Any discussion? Not hearing any. We'll move to a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries again, Brian. Okay, item C, uh, easement acquisition for the Otney property in Erie County. This item authorizes the acquisition of a fishing access easement on roughly 410 linear feet of stream frontage along both sides of Elk Creek for $5,500. If approved, the easement acquisition will be funded with monies generated through the sale of Lake Erie fishing permits. So moved. Nice second. second. Any discussion on this? Not hearing any, I'll ask for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Again, Brian, one more. Actually, two more, Commissioner. Uh, one uh, more. Uh, yeah, item, item D is the Kozlowski uh, property acquisition. This item would authorize the acquisition of roughly 8.04 acres of land that will, that will provide access to 1,600 linear feet of frontage along uh, each side of Elk Creek for $100,000. Uh, if approved, the property acquisition will be funded with monies generated through the sale of Lake Erie fishing permits. Motion to accept. So moved. Second. I'll second it. No discussion. Uh, I'd like to remind people that these are all coming from the Lake Erie Stamp Fund, which even after these acquisitions, Brian, I believe we still have at least two and a half million dollars in that fund. So we're aggressively attack, act, addressing that with the Lake Erie Committee and Habitat's work and other things, and we'll continue to do that. So calling for a vote on this, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to the flowage easement. Yes, uh, item E is uh, flowage easement uh, acquisitions, uh, Glade Run Lake, that's in uh, Butler County. Uh, this item seeks authorization to acquire roughly nine flowage easements on properties adjacent to the Commission's Glade Run Lake property. These easements will compensate landowners for any potential flooding of these properties under severe storm conditions or rain events. Uh, acquisition of the easements is a condition of securing the necessary DEP permits for the reconstruction of the dam at this facility. Motion to accept. Motion. Second? Second. Second. Wonderful. Any discussion on this easement? Hearing none, I'll ask for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. And I believe we're going to move on to voting with Corey. Colonel Britcher. Thank you, Commissioner. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Commissioners, again. For those that don't know me, I'm Colonel Britcher with the Bureau of Law Enforcement and also the Voting Law Administrator. <clears throat> Uh, we have several items this morning uh, under the voting uh, heading uh, that will start on page 8 in your agenda. First one is an amendment to section 53.8 for boats. And uh, uh, last year, the commission was uh, contacted by numerous boaters and outfitters regarding our um, regulations under section 53.8 for uh, inflatable boats on our property. Uh, we looked at that regulation and determined that, that there was no real reason for it to be in place. There was no accidents. And after review by staff and then committee this morning, um, it, it comes before you. And staff recommend that the commission adopt the amendment as set forth in a notice of proposed rulemaking. And if adopted, this amendment would take, place, or take effect upon publication in PA Bulletin. I'll move it. Second. 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 Uh, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll ask for a vote. 
All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to overloading. This will be B in your agenda on page 9. And it's an amendment to section 105.4, overloading or improper loading of boats. Uh, staff wish to clarify the commission's regulations relating to the overloading and improper loading by adopting language recommended by the National Association of State Boating Law Administrators, uh, Model Act for Maximum Horsepower and Capacity. Uh, the Model Act prohibits uh, the operation of certain recreational vessels when those vessels exceed their loading or powering capacities or exceed the capacity limits identified on the vessel's capacity label. Um, this was put out, notice proposed rulemaking uh, containing the amendment was published and there was no public comments uh, that were received on this. Uh, the recommendation would be staff recommended that the commission adopt the amendments as set forth in the notice of proposed rulemaking, and if adopted, these amendments would also go into effect upon publication in the PA bulletin. Motion to accept. So moved. Second. Second. Thank you, Eric. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, I'll move forward with a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. And your third one. All right, this will be C, Amendment to Section 111.40, Luzerne County, and it will be on page 10 of your agenda. Uh, this has a lengthy commentary. I'm just going to hit some highlights for you. Uh, Lily Lake is a 160-acre impoundment situated on a 376-acre parcel owned by the Commission in southeastern Luzerne County. Uh, the Commission acquired this Lily Lake in 1968. When the Commission initially acquired the lake, uh, there was controversy over uh, what uses the lake should, should be allowed. And uh, the cottage owners enlisted, uh, insisted on water skiing and high-speed motor boating. Um, after several discussions with the current or the then executive director and the boating advisory board, uh, regulations were set in place that would limit the horsepower to 60 on that lake, as well as no boats greater than 18 feet. They also authorized a a, um, a speed skiing zone on the lake, where they could. Uh, uh, ski and do other high-speed activities. Uh, last year, the, the Fish and Boat Commission was approached by the, the Property Owners Association once again, and we met Executive Director Arway, myself, Commissioner Gavlik, and several others met with them, and at that time they indicated a desire to make some changes to the regulation. Uh, staff reviewed it, and it was decided that we could uh, extend the size of the boat to 20 feet, but we would like to keep the horsepower remaining at 60. So that's the amendment that's in front of you this morning. Motion to accept. So, so moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Not hearing any, I'll ask for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Nothing. Motion carries. And are you going to do the Wetland Wildlands Conservancy Grant? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, this will be uh, letter D, page 13 on your agenda. And it's the addition of a grant to Wildlands Conservancy, Lehigh River Access Area Development, Northampton and Lehigh Counties. And uh, after January 2012, meeting commission approved a grant in the amount of $270,000 to the Wildlands Conservancy to re rehabilitate and construct two boat launch facilities listed um, as access sites on the Lehigh River Water Trail. After that grant was awarded, um, the total estimate cost for the project was 333,000, and I'm sorry, 333,324 uh, dollars, and the $270,000 grant that the commission uh, uh, gave was not sufficient to, to cover additional costs. The Wildlands Conservancy, to finish the project, has requested an, an additional $80,000 um, to take care of that. Uh, this money, um, staff are presenting the request of additional 80000 in funding to the commission for approval. Uh, we have reviewed it, and bids have found them in order. The project cannot be scaled back without having any undesirable impact on the project as a whole. This additional funding will continue from the settlement of natural resource damages at the Superfund site. Um, based on that, staff recommend the commission approve an additional grant in the amount of 80000 to the Wildlands Conservancy, as more fully described in the full commentary. I'll have a motion to accept. Motion. Second. Second. Ah, wonderful. Thank you. Any discussion? And ask for a vote on D. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Now, Thank moving on to fisheries, I believe. Andy, you're up. Yes, I am. 
Good morning, I'm Andy Shields. I'm Deputy Director for Field Operations, and I'll be handling the fisheries and habitat items. We should be at page 14 of your agenda. These next two items are very similar. I'm going to, to cover them both, but I'll cover how they are related uh, in the first introduction. The first one is amendment to section 65.24, which is under miscellaneous special regulations, and it pertains to Opossum Lake in Cumberland County. Uh, the request for final rulemaking for this one and the next one, which covers Leisha Lake, we'll vote on them separately, but it's the same request. These are both lakes that have been refilled after reconstruction, and uh, we've had catch and release regulations in place for all species except stock trout. The fisheries managers have determined that additional time is needed before those catch and release regulations would be changed to any regulation that might allow harvest. And so the request at this time is to change from an ending date of those catch and release regulations of June 18th, 2016, to extend uh, regulations that will go into effect on June 19th, 2016, indefinitely until such time as the fisheries managers determine that the fishery could support some harvest of some type. So the request is for final rulemaking. The staff recommend that if this is adopted, the amendment would go into effect on June 19th, 2016. This is for Opossum Lake in Cumberland County. I'll move it further. Second. second. Thank you. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 The next item is for Leisure Lake in Lehigh County. It's exactly the same situation and uh, with the same description. This also, if adopted, the amendment would go into effect on June 19th, 2016. I'll move again, Mr. President. Thank you. Motion, motion second? Second. All right, and all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And seeing none, and was there any opposed on the last one? I apologize for missing that. No. None either. So moving forward, we'll go to C, designation. And just to be consistent, I should note that for each of those waters, there was one public comment opposing the change. Correct. And we'll cover public comments on the, on the rest of these as well. Thank you, Andy. So the next item is a designation. This is a designation of Upper Kettle Creek Basin as catch and release all tackle under Section 65.15. The Upper Kettle Creek Basin was managed under the Wild Brook Trout Enhancement Program through July 2015. If you remember the presentation from yesterday, there were a number of streams in the upper part of Kettle Creek that were evaluated for their ability to um, improve size structure, age structure, and biomass through catch and release regulations. At the conclusion of the study, it was determined that the majority of those waters did not uh, respond favorably. However, this part of the upper section of the Kettle Creek Basin did, and there was an increase in, in biomass and in length of fish as a result of catch and release regulations. So the proposal here is to request that this part of the upper Kettle Creek Basin remain or be placed into a catch and release regulation, and it would also include brown trout. Um, there were a total of 12 public comments received. Eight of the comments supported the proposal. Two preferred catch and release artificial lures only. One prefers catch and release fly fishing only. And one supported single barbless hooks. As you may recall from the presentation yesterday, this would be catch and release all tackle. So bait and all forms of tackle would be allowed. Um, if approved, this would go, uh, this designation would be uh, in effect upon publication of a second notice in the Pennsylvania Bulletin. A motion to accept? I move, Mr. President. I'll second. Thank you. Any discussion? Not hearing any. We'll go forward with the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to designation of Lake Winola. Correct. As a stock trout water open to year-round fishing under Section 65.19, uh, Lake Winola is a 197-acre natural lake in Wyoming County. And it has a very robust warm water fishery, but also is stocked with hatchery trout. The opportunity here is to make it open to year round <coughs> fishing, uh, thereby, instead of having fishing uh, off limits during the period when trout are stocked and the season closes on March 1 until opening day, anglers would be able to fish for the warm water fish. Uh, any trout that happened to be in the lake would be catch and release only. This is what we've done in a number of waters around the state to improve angler opportunities, and this was requested uh, by some local anglers. Um, so staff recommend that the commission approve the designation. 
If approved, the designation will go into effect upon publication of a second notice in the Pennsylvania Bulletin, and there were no public comments received for this item. Motion to accept? Motion. Second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll ask for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Classification of wild trap streams, proposed additions. Okay, this one is, uh, on, we're on page 19 now. And this was a rather large item as we've been doing at a number of recent commission meetings. We address classification of wild trout streams and then separately address classification of class A wild trout streams. This is wild trout streams. We'll do class A in a minute. Uh, this proposed 99 additions, three revisions, and one removal. The three additions, uh, I'm sorry, the three revisions were Laurel Run and Berks County. And I just want to say this stream name so I can try it. Tanga Skutak in Clinton County, and Kish Creek in Mifflin County. Those had adjustments made to their lengths uh, due to updated information from electrofishing and field work. And the removal was um, Flugy Hollow Run in Somerset County. That's also an interesting one to repeat. Um, the commission received a total of 49 public comments. 24 supported all of the proposed designation, and 25 supported the designation of specific waters. Copies of those public comments have been provided to the commissioners. And as is often the practice, these, uh, these waters have been placed on the commission website no less than 60 days in advance of when they've come to you for action. So the staff recommend that the commission add 99 <coughs> new waters to the commission's list of wild trout streams, revise the section limits of three waters, and remove one water from the list as set forth in the notice of proposed designations. If approved, these will go into effect upon publication of a second notice in the Pennsylvania Bulletin. Take a motion to accept. So moved. Any second? Second. And hearing any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. We're moving on to Class A. It's proposed additions to the list of Class A streams. Uh, originally in your agenda item, there were 38 streams. We'll, we'll cover that in a, in a moment. This request is for the approval of 37 streams. Um, the proposal included 38 stream sections. Commission received a total of 28 public comments. 25 support all the proposed designations, and three supported the designation of specific waters. In one particular water, uh, Laura Run, which is in Clearfield County, there was concern expressed by a sportsman's club uh, because this could impact a children's derby held on that stream. In response to that public comment, staff have agreed to meet with the members of the sportsman's club in the very near future to discuss how this uh, can be addressed and hopefully uh, come out with a, uh, a reasonable uh, conclusion to that. So the staff recommend that the commission add 37 stream sections to its Class A wild trout list. And if approved, these additions will go into effect upon publication again of a second notice in the Pennsylvania Bulletin. I'll move. Second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? I'd like to just say that uh, on our classification of wild trout streams and Class A wild trout streams, we've taken due diligence and a lot of data is put into our books so that we're doing a significant review and uh, spend a lot of time in fisheries and our, our staff looking through all this data and summarizing it for us so that we can understand it well enough as commissioners and I want to applaud them for that. Any other discussion? All good questions. I'm moving forward with the question. All those in favor of the Aye. proposed Aye. additions? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Andy, moving on to other matters now. Other matters. A proposal to continue stocking Class A wild trout streams under Section 57.8. You'll recall about a year ago at a meeting this time last year, uh, staff requested and the commissioners approve the addition of, or the continue, continued stocking of 10 streams that were determined to be class A that, that were already stocked and had a robust wild trout population. At that time, uh, it was made known to the commissioners and to the staff that there could be as many as four more streams that fit into a similar category, whereas high, high use, um, angler use, and in an urban or suburb suburban area fit into criteria that made these uh, a good choice to consider stocking what would be a class A wild trout stream. And so at this point, 
Uh, there are two waters, Fishing Creek Section 14 in Clinton County and Kishikoquillis Creek Section 5 in Mifflin County that meet those criteria that were set forth last year. Um, as a result of that agenda item and that approval last year, prior to granting permission to stock a Class A wild trout stream, under Section 71.4, the Executive Director uh, needs to obtain the approval of the Commission. So what you're being asked to do here today is to approve the continuation of stocking of two streams, Fishing Creek in Clinton County and Kish Creek in Mifflin County, that have been determined to, to uh, support a Class A population of wild uh, trout. So if these are added, um, we, the Commission and the staff recommend the continued stocking of hatchery trout, and this is not something that has to uh, show up in the Pennsylvania Bulletin. You, you agree to it, you approve it, the stocking will continue, it on the surface won't look any different to the to local anglers. Motion to approve. Um, second, second that. Second that. Any discussion? Um, well, I want to remind uh, Andy and, and uh, or and let list, let the public know that both of these ranked in the 93rd and 96 percent of correct. public fishing locations that were stocked. So they're very highly rated and very highly ranked. Hearing no other discussion, let's move for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion. No. No, and, uh, we have an opposed by Len. I forgot. I'm sorry. I, didn't. I didn't mean to step over. <laughs> <Got him off. laughs> Adoption of the strategic plan for management of wild trout. And this is our final item for today. Um, the the um, proposal is to adopt for the commissioners to adopt the strategic plan, which will run from 2016 through 2017. And as you all recall, we, are, we currently have a strategic plan in place for wild trout. This builds upon and, and finishes some of the work of that and gets into some new work for the next two years. Um, the commission has received 74 public comments and copies of the public comments and provided to the commissioners. It was noted in a review of those comments, a number of, uh, of anglers and the, and the general public took significant time to review the plan in detail and provide specific comments to the agency. A number of those comments were worked into the plan when an earlier draft was put out in the fall. You'll remember the commissioners met in a special fisheries committee meeting uh, just before Thanksgiving of 2015, and some additional changes were made. The executive director also provided some additional changes, and what we have is a, a plan that was reviewed thoroughly yesterday during your committee meeting, and at that time that plan was approved. And so what you're being asked to do is adopt the strategic plan for the management of trout fisheries in Pennsylvania for the years 2016 to 2017. Do I have a motion to accept? I'll move. And a second. I'll second. I have a small discussion item before we go on because Gleed and I have had a lot of discussion about uh, the strategic plan for trout management. And as you heard yesterday, even in our meeting uh, for fisheries, we had questions and comments. And Leroy, you were writing notes down and stuff. This is a strategic plan. It's good for two years. Um, we'll have another one at the end of this, but any strategic plan that we've had has a fluidity to it, meaning that modifications, changes, and additions and subtractions from it at any point, and finishing goals, but even if we finish a goal, we might have a better goal from a strategic plan. So I just want to remind the public that this trial plan is a, a formal document, has a lot of good issues and things in it, and we will be fluid for the next two years with fisheries to continue to adapt and change and make sure that we do the right thing for the trout and the resource. Any more other comment? Not hearing any, I'll call for a mo um, vote. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? Not hearing any, we'll move through to the statewide habitat improvement grant program. Okay, the very last item under, ha and the, the only one under habitat and environmental. Um, as you recall, in, pre in previous years, we've had some other programs where the commissioners have been asked to uh, defer authority on grants that are less than $100,000 to the executive director, which allows program efficiency and effectiveness, and we can keep moving as funds come in. Uh, this particular program is to do that for habitat improvement and fisheries management grants, and specifically, these are almost always restricted fund accounts. They have a very specific use as to how they can be uh, dispersed. And so uh, following a presentation to the Fisheries and Habitat Environmental Committee, 
Um, the staff have requested that the commissioners authorize the executive director to award individual grants in the amount of $100,000 or less per grantee per project per year and utilizing various funding sources that were identified in the commentary and, of course, new restricted account sources that may come in in the future. For grants exceeding $100,000, staff will continue to seek separate commission approval. Thank you. In a second. Second to that. And hearing any discussion? Hearing none, we'll move forward with a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The, the Habitat Improvement Fisheries Management Grant Program is adopted. That's all I have. Thank you, Andy. Thank you. Um, under other business, uh, I believe Executive Director Arway would like to at least comment on our March meeting and, and the significance of that because we didn't right. do that today in uh, his Commissioner executive Sabatos. report. So we'll Commissioner Sabatos has a motion business. to put before the board. You have another? Well, we're going to talk about other matters, so you have one. Go ahead. Um, Mr. Chairman, uh, yesterday... There was an item that was not on the agenda, and um, we discussed it, and it did pass fisheries. Um, so it was appropriate that we bring this up under new business. Oh, I so I have a motion, and I'd like to at least put it on the floor, and if anybody wants to amend it, go for it. Uh, I move the board ask the executive director our way to direct staff to investigate all feasible alternatives to the existing trophy trout artificial lure only regulation in place on Saucon Creek, Northampton County, and report the findings to the board at a future commission meeting. I have a motion to accept that. I make a motion to accept it. Mr. Second. Spires, I have a second. Commissioner second. Alloy. I have any discussion on that? Yes, I'd like to amend that. I'd like the findings to be reported back to the board at the March meeting rather than a future meeting. I'd like to be specific on that. Secondly, I'd like the inclusion of that, that the stretch of stream uh, in particular to be looked at on regulations is that part of Saucon Creek that flows through Saucon Park in the town of Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Um, Mr. Chairman, I amend my motion to uh, make suggestions. Do I have a first motion to accept? So moved. Okay. And a second? I believe. Oh, no, I, I you amended your motion. I can't so I second, second it. All right, I believe. And the, any discussion? Not hearing any, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor of this motion? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Wonderful. Okay, any other business to come before the board? I'd like John to bring you up to date on our March meeting quick. Well, it's... I think everyone in the room knows uh, this is a very special year for us as an agency with our <coughs> commemoration and celebration of our 150th anniversary. And um, that'll begin, uh, although it, on a calendar year basis it begins this, this month, uh, the reality of it is we were created on March 30th, 1866. So our March meeting it coincides with that, um, uh, that, that date. Uh, when Governor Curtin signed, signed the uh, legislation to create the Pennsylvania Fish Commission in 1866. So I'd like to, you know, everyone to join us uh, celebrating that at a variety of events that we're going to be hosting around the Commonwealth. And um, check our website. We'll have those, that schedule of dates posted on the website uh, for the public to join in with the celebration. And if you have any ideas about how uh, you can help us celebrate with you as a partner group uh, or agency, um, please let us know. We, we, uh, this is a special year for us, and we'd like to, to, to celebrate it with, with all of our anglers and boaters. I think uh, also as us as commissioners, and we go back to our associations and agencies, anything in a regional basis that we can do to promote that 150th would be wonderful. So I'll approach the Suns on that and maybe have some type of summer event or something that would be very you know, advantageous to getting the word out. Any other matters from the commissioners? Chairman, I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. A second. Well, second. Before adjournment of the next meeting. Sorry. As John mentioned, uh, the next meeting will be March 30th and 31st, a Wednesday and a Thursday, and it will be held in Harrisburg. Wonderful. Now, Bill, you can ask for adjournment. So moved. <laughs> second. Second. <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. The meeting's formally adjourned. Thank you all for coming, and thank the public for viewing our video as we go through this. Oh.